the Ghost Cult Magazine podcast welcomes in the great Tim Scold of Scold. How are you doing, Tim? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. I, I, it's great to talk to you today. Congratulations on your brand new album, Dies Irae, out now on Cleopatra Records. You have s- several records on that label. I think this is your best. Uh, 25 years of Scold. We're going to talk a little bit about that. I know it seems crazy. You've got a v- longer music career than that, but Scold in particular has been your baby and your namesake band for a long time. But before we unpack all these things and, and kick this off, of course, uh, I just want to make sure I like to check in with everybody. You know, it has been, a, I can't imagine you being off the road this long in your entire career. I hope nobody in your family has fallen ill from the virus or anything. And I generally speaking, I know it's a good time for you making music and putting music out, but I just, I like to make sure that everybody's good before I start asking artistic questions. Cause I just feel like I don't want to lose that human side of me. Yeah, you, you got you got good manners on you. You got good <laughs> manners on you, sir. And uh, and thank you. Uh, but as far as as far as I know, uh, and personally, the uh, we've been affected minimally by the pandemic, actually. So you know, knock on wood, and so far so good. You try to make like you know, like I said, uh, make le- make lemonade. There's always going to be lemons coming your way. Try to make some lemonade. That's it, man. All we can do is keep being creative. That's what we decided to do. You know, we saw the difficulties and the challenges of, you know, what was looking like a year with, it's been a year with no shows. My last actual music event was a year ago today. And, uh, you know, which is very sad to me. It was awesome. I did a lot, you know, but, you know, at the same time, uh, and I understand that artists, some artists feel like this is not an environment where they can, if I can't sell my album to someone over a merch table on tour, maybe I can't do this right now, but I appreciate that you have put out music in this time of the world, that you have stayed very creative and focused. And, and I'm, I'm grateful because having people to talk to like you and having new music to listen to like DSA Ray has been great. Well, thank you. And you know, it's, it's tricky times. I'm not trying to downplay the, the pandemic and the effect it's having on, on everybody in, in all different ways. The album was actually done and completed before the pandemic. I uh, delivered the album more than a year ago, and with a, with the intent of setting a summer twenty, summer twenty, uh, release, and uh, we had a full, you know, five six week of touring booked for for that album release. I think it was a June or Ju- I think it was a July date, but as soon as the pandemic hit, we realized that was not going to work, and uh, we uh, we decided to use wait and see what happens and at some point uh, we decided that let's not keep waiting anymore this you know it's i mean I've, i worked on on several albums throughout my career that has unfortunately got stuck in the machine of the music industry and sat on shelves for for longer than this actually but uh it, I, I try not to be uh, infatuated with the uh, with with silly things so i hope my music has a timeless quality to it where at least it, it should be able to like have a shelf life for a year or two maybe more well i you know i i don't know if i learned anything to be honest because it's always changing and i think you think you figure something out and by the time you, you you're on the next record things have changed dramatically i've seen some paradigm shift shit going on where you know the the napster and the mp3 was a, a big change for the music industry and the pandemic now with the touring was probably the other the biggest of the big so to speak but even on on the the settings i've worked in with different bands and different projects there has been differences within those structures as well so i don't know if i'm I, I mean, I, if I'm learning anything, it's I'm learning that I need to learn more. That's a good, listen, that's a great way to be, uh, you know, nobody wants to, nobody likes this guy who thinks, to, or, or person that thinks they're the smartest person in the room. You can always learn more. You can always do more. We did the same thing. It goes cold. We were like, okay, there are no shows to do. That's 60% of what we do is shows and festivals. And I used to interview bands, like interview artists like yourself in the bottom of a club in the basement or in the green room or backstage or on stage. And now it's Zoom and uh, Skype and phone calls. So 
we pivoted, you know, that's what you have to do. You, if you have to pivot yep. and still kind of stay who you are. Absolutely. You have to, uh, you know, find new ways and, and constantly. The, the, well, I think it's the Marine Corps that uh, uh, observe, adapt and overcome. Mm. So there you go. Nice. Slogans. Wow. It's like very punk rock. Of them. <laughs> yeah. I never knew the Marines were so I never knew the Marines were so punk rock. That's like uh, very Ramones. Yeah, and just so you know that a hoorah I put in there is actually army. Just to, but oh, never mind. Just to mess with people. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, and I and I'm a fan of all my armed services friends and everybody that's uh, supporting Ghost Cult. Um, but yeah, man. Um, DSRA, what a killer record! Uh, I really have enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite things you have ever done. Uh, among many things, like I said, I have followed your entire career, uh, almost your entire career, and, and it's not over yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, this record, you. you said you were sitting on it for a while. Um, you know, fantastic guitar stuff, great vocals, really cool lyrics. Uh, what is it? What's that process like for you? Do you write music all the time? Or are you like, oh, I have to put a record out in a, in a year or 18 months. Let me start writing every day. How do you do that? So that's a, a, a tricky question for me because, and I get asked that question all the time and I understand why people want to ask me, but I don't have a good answer for you because this whole thing about making music is, uh, is sacred in some ways where I feel that if I analyze that the whole phenomena to me as a person, what's going on, I, I'm afraid I'll wreck it. If I, if I analyze it and dissect it, I will bleed out and die on the table. So I try to be somewhat oblivious to how and why and when, but for some fucking reason, I'm still excited about making music. I, and it's gear, sometimes it's, you know, it's software, and hardware, it's just melodies, it's structures, it's beats, it's rhythms, it's all, you know, it doesn't stop. I, for some reason, I'm, I still I still get off on doing this shit, man. Nice, uh, and I love the create that creative spirit, and I really appreciate that actually because it's not easy to put into words what makes you want to write down a lyric or what makes you come up with a melody line or what makes you make a riff. Uh, I I know that you have been a multi instrumentalist your whole career, but what is the instrument you go to and prefer? I'm in my house, and the, what's the first instrument you reach to play? Well, it's it's a guitar most of the time because uh so with computers being readily available and implanted in your face by now there's uh you know you can pretty much do anything anywhere so it's brutal as far as that goes but i keep coming back to playing guitar and i know i'm far from the best guitar player in the world i have no grand illusions about that but I enjoy playing guitar. I really love playing guitar. And maybe some of that shines through into the music and I hope it does, but cause I, 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 I dig it. Nice. At this point, do you have like a favorite actual guitar that you like keep at home and only take to write with and would ne never take on tour again or? No. Uh, so that's where now you're getting into a realm of psychology <laughs> and what we, what we need to talk about commitment. And, and maybe that is the trick about uh, about still being excited about making music is the fact that I'm not, I am a multi and, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. I'm all over the spectrum. I have, maybe I have some sort of uh, psychological issues where I can hear the guitar player argue with a singer in my head as the computer, as the, the producer is telling them to shut up and the drummer is walking out of the room. You know, it gets really complicated. <laughs> I hear you. Um, and of course, that's always a thing. It, it, you know, Scold is your band. And I imagine all these things kind of start with you and end with you. So uh, is, there a, is there an area in the creative process where you let others come in? And what do you think of this riff? And what would you put on this for a bass or a drum part? Do you let other people contribute at this point? Or it's, the, you know, Tim beginning and end? Yeah, it's the latter. It's beginning <laughs> and end. I mean, some, I, and then there's people who want to hear stuff as you're working on it. And sometimes I will play, but I'm, I'm not playing when I, and when I do, I don't play music for other people to get their opinion. I, I if anything, I'm, I'm playing it for, for, for other people to get their reaction more than their opinion. And uh, also it's really funny or interesting or weird what happens to my 
how I perceive my music when I play it to other people, because it actually changes. If I, if I play something to a drummer, I'll start listening to the drums in a different way. And if I play something to uh, someone who I, I think is a, an amazing guitar player, I'll scrutinize my guitar playing twice as hard, you know? So it's a, uh, it makes you listen to your own stuff in a different light from a different angle. So there's, there's a time and a place where I think that's really important, but I'm also completely, uh, you know, up my own, I don't know, <laughs> that's a bad, bad choice of terminology. No, I but, mean, listen, you know what, again, this begins and ends with you, like you said, and ultimately it's gotta be your vision. There's a thing in films called like auteur theory, right? Like Charlie Chaplin or, you know, uh, you know, somebody like that who has like a complete vision start to finish. I wrote the script, but you know, Prince was like this. I wrote the script, I wrote all the, I wrote, all, I wrote the dialogue, I wrote the camera angles, I wrote the blocking, I did the sets, I did the costumes, I wrote the music, I did the score, everything, start to finish, soup to nuts. Right. So right, I right. think that's kind of who you are and uh, doesn't, don't apologize for it. At the same time, you've been able to go into, you know, KMFDM and you know, produce bands and go into yeah. other bands and be a, a contributor that way too. Yeah, I, so the, the I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And that's what the Skull Project is. It, to me, it is that, and it started out being that, and it will probably always remain being that. But when I made the first album, I, I really honestly did not uh, believe I was going to make a second or a third or a fourth. I mean, every record is like a, a weird uh, surprise blessing concept thing in itself. Maybe it's a curse by now, but <laughs> it's a, it, it, I, I never set out with the, I don't think I, I set out with that vision that maybe Prince had, or, you know, I, I think maybe, maybe I come from a place more like Stallone did where, you know, it's like, a, it, it's just a pure uh, emotional thing where I, it, it comes from excitement, so to speak, that it's not, it's not necessarily defined as an ego trip, but it becomes that because I feel so much about these songs and about that track or about that guitar and it just blooms into the, what it is. But yeah, I, I, I agree and I think you're totally right. I think I think I am a pretty good uh, sidekick. I make a really good team player if I apply myself. Nice. That's a great perspective and attitude to have. And obviously it's helped expand your career and get more people to learn about you and your music, which was great. Yeah, and, and sometimes, I mean, one one kind of feeds into the other. The fact that I can quarterback and I can play a team role is because I've uh, I've worn a lot of hats so I I have some empathy for for the other guys in the band or whoever else is involved in the project in a different way than sometimes people do or do not exactly uh one thing I wanted to I don't want to lose the uh the thread here and talk about the album for a little bit I I, I have to say I, I love uh not just some of the lyrics on the songs but i love some of your singing you really kind of set into your uh bassy baritone level voice and it's really cool i don't i think uh maybe on the last couple of records you didn't do as much of it but i think you really found a really cool sweet spot for your voice here uh doing kind of more you know like very in, now i want to say crooning but just very emotional deep singing which i like a lot Okay, right, cool. Thank you. You're welcome. I think a lot All of right. th I think what happens a lot of no. times in the genre. Hey, let oh. me do that again. I should say. Okay. <laughs> Great. Thank you. <laughs> nice. I think what happens a lot of times in the genre is like, you know, obviously people get very tropey and they do the dynamics like loud, soft, angry, not angry, but I like that there's like a lot of consistency all the way through here vocally is, is my point. Thank you. I mean, uh, you know, I don't, so as far as making music, and having made music for a long time, that means I have, a, I have a lot of vantage point to draw from. I've seen a lot of different things, but at the same time, I'm very aware of the kitchen sink, so to speak, where you try, where you put everything at, at the same time. I've made records like that in the past, which I feel in hindsight were a bit of a mistake, 
and uh, not the best of choices. And they were usually done from uh, an overachiever kind of standpoint where we tried too much, too hard, and it just, that's not necessarily the way to, you know, screaming isn't necessarily always the way to make a, put a, put a point across and so forth. There's a, there's more to it than that. And obviously, again, you, I, I imagine you never thought you would not be able to get on tour behind this record. Uh, I don't know if you're a fan of live streams, or if you consider doing some kind of live streaming event for the fans or just for yourself. Uh, I, I mean, I've thought about it. For a, for a hot minute, but you know I've I've been in so many clubs and, and so many different venues and toured a lot, so I know, I have a pretty good idea of what touring means at this point, and uh, to pretend that on a live stream seems really weird to me. I mean I, I'm not against interaction on 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 a digital level and try to make some something like that but the, just putting up a bunch of cameras and then doing a, a a pseudo show in a rehearsal setting seems bizarre to me I, so i don't have much interest in doing that gotcha i understand uh and then of course we don't know when shows will come back but as a person who yells into a microphone and stands in front of strange people when do you think you'll be ready to go do a tour or even just a local show so i have to refer to my agent at this point that you know regarding these things and he is essentially and this is not very this is not very uplifting but he 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 pretty much tells me to forget about a full tour for the rest of the year then might, we might be able to do one-offs but yeah it doesn't it doesn't still doesn't look good but i mean i it was a couple of weeks ago since i spoke with him last so i should touch base with him again well you know this is we're all kind of dealing with this new reality and uh, I'm hopeful that, you know, even though we've, we've said some sad things, I am hopeful it's going to get better. People are getting vaccinated, less people are getting sick. So hopefully if we have to lose this year also, it'll suck. But hopefully by the end of the year, later in the year, we're going to start seeing some things. I've seen some shows and festivals and tours already booked and announced. So that's nice. And in the meantime, yeah. we have this new music. Yeah. I mean, I kind of what it comes to this very little we individually or even organized can do about this it is what it is and we're just gonna have to try to manage our reaction to it and how we cope and deal with it so to speak as we wrap this up i want to give you back your day but of course i had to ask you about the 25th anniversary of scold and of course shotgun messiah is over 30 years old and you have a 30th anniversary with that band but 25 years in july for the debut Scold album. And it was, a, it was a transition for you to go from, you know, Shaka Messiah to Scold. And I wanted to know if you had any thoughts about that debut album I, I, of a certain age, anybody who was like, if you had Columbia House in the nineties and you got the Universal Soldier soundtrack, <laughs> which had Scold and, you know, uh, Megadeth, yeah. I think, and Ministry and Static X, it was like that era, of, you know, yeah, uh, I actually was not aware of that anniversary being like that. But uh, music is tricky because I see, I meet a lot, I talk to, to a lot of people who are uh, peculiarly, peculiarly, but, you know, they were really into one specific album or one specific, specific time. And uh, it's all about vantage point when you hear something and, and music is, uh, another one of those things that ties into all those other things in your life. <clears throat> so for each, everybody has, it's funny to me because I feel like I'm making one song, but I will play it to two different people and they will have two completely different experiences listening to that one song. So there's magic in this. And uh, specifically about that first Scold album was a bit magical too because the, you know it was an end of an era as far as glam rock and that hard rock was essentially done and over with from the music industry standpoint but i felt that i'd already started i had already left that part of town in my head in my mind and, and started w working with electronics and electronic music before that even happened so it was always, it was almost like a bit of a, a, not a relief, but it did not feel 
wrong. It felt somewhat natural to move on and, and, and move away or go further, look in different places. And uh, that is also another album that came uh, about in a very strange, uh, uh, wonderful way <laughs> and took a lot of time. Uh, it sat on the shelf at RCA for a very long time until it was actually released. And by the time it was released, I, I don't think the, the record company was very attached to it anymore, but I was. And uh, yeah, I mean, I can muse and, and ponder over this stuff forever. So Nice. Well, luckily it didn't uh, jade you from the process. You continued to thrive and make these, you know, incredible albums and work on these projects. And uh, I'm super excited. You know, I love this record and I hope uh, more than just your typical fans find it because I think it's awesome. I'm really looking forward to whatever else you're working on this year, other projects, producing. Uh, you know, I'm really glad that uh, after all this time, you still have a lot of fire in you to do these things. Oh, cool, and thank you. I mean, as much as I, I talk about how this is an ego trip, when people point out certain things and, and they make certain connections to certain things, it's going to leave an impression on me. Of course it does. So I think... I am to some extent driven by a fan base and what people think of me. And sometimes it's, it's contradictory. So if, I, if I'm, I'm working on something, I say, well, by now I don't necessarily uh, compare my music to other artists. I, I've actually started comparing it to my own music instead. And I, I go down an avenue. I really oh, I kind of been there, I kind of did that. So I can either play off of that or I can detour and go off in another direction. But it's funny. It, it is very dynamic, very fluid. It, it's always changing. But thank you for your appreciation. Yeah, man. It's been wonderful catching up with you. Thanks for hanging out and spending some time with Ghost Cult. I hope we do it again in person next time. Uh, hopefully not before too long. I hear you. Absolutely right.